Hello, folks. Welcome again to the one, the only. I am Hobo Tom, and it's Tuesday. Wow, it's a it's a normal podcast day, normal YouTube day for me. Oh, oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Actually, only looks too pretty. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's one of those days. It's a Tuesday. That means actually, I might try and do two things. I might. I have to see how I feel for the second thing. But I'm definitely going to talk about some Impact Wrestling. Impact Wrestling. Oh, wow. This was so much better than Raw. Thank you, Impact. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Let's see, see how quickly I can get this done so I can take a quick shower. And maybe do another show? Wow. Pia just piling on all the wrestling stuff. Well, we'll see how much how long I can keep this up, though. Blowing my mind up. Uh, so this is Impact Wrestling. Again, Impact is becoming more of a competitor with AEW than WWE is. I think mainly because of social media. I know, like, oh, Lana, don't speak anymore. That was terrible. But everyone's watching it on YouTube. Uh, so, so we'll see what's happening. I, I saw it. And it was terrible. And, and I hope Bum Slicks, I hope you gave them the proper amount of booze. And you probably had to drink the proper amount of booze before that. But let's talk about some impact. So as always, every so often, impact tends to follow a general formula. And I've noticed this. A couple of weeks after a pay-per-view, they always have a number one contender for the X Division title. And they're setting things up for good or for bad for their pay-per-views, which, again, for good or for bad, is still up for debate, depending who it is. So, to start off the show, amazingly, I'll tell you what, this was fun. It was a fatal five-way. It was Rahik Raju, Trey, Aiden Prince, Brett Banks, Willie Mack, and Petey Williams, the Canadian Destroyer, to become the number one challenger for the X Division champion. X. Um, this was really fun. They just started off flying. I don't think they actually did a lot of mat wrestling in this besides Petey Williams hitting a, his, his patented Canadian Destroyer. Well, I'll tell you what, they were flying all over the place. This is flying over to the outside, flying on the inside, um, flying onto two people, flying onto five people. Who knows? Uh, Ace Austin, the X Division competitor, put out a movie. I wonder if it was one of those porn movies or not. And also, they could do this either really good. Oh, really bad. But Trey's mom was there. <laughs> she had a lot of lipstick. I'll get into that, that, that shortly. But Ace Austin kept on saying, oh, that's, oh wow, that's, that's Trey's mom. Whoa. Ace, tranquilo. You have to get over your Alicia Fox. Oh, Alicia Edwards. I said Alicia Fox. The addiction. Now it's Alicia Edwards. Oh, and that, there goes my yummy water ice. So good as water ice, though. It's actually tasty and semi healthy for you. Better than ice cream, at least. Ice cream's expensive, too. Water ice, at least you get a couple packs. The same price. But again, they just, go f they just go flying. This is the X Division. They just go flying. Willie Mack goes flying. Um, Prince and Banks kind of. They do mirror moves, which is kind of cool because they are the, the two local enhancement competitors from Canada. Um, Rahik Raju, uh, he was smart though. He had, he had again, and he did a Northern Lights suplex into a perfect plex. I love the fact that they call it the perfect plex instead of the fisherman suplex. Both are the same thing. But I like the fact that Don Kaus loves to mention any other wrestling promotion, including his own. I'll tell you what. Don Callis and, and, and Josh, they just have fun. And if they're having fun, 
that means in the in the ring the, the competitors are probably having fun the crowd's having fun the people like me at home are having fun because it makes it just more interesting i mean they're not bantering back and forth it doesn't seem awkward it just seems fun like these are two guys are commenting um, com- commenting commentating about something they actually get paid to do and something that they enjoy and they s- genuinely seem to like each other too um Eventually, it becomes a top rope spot fest, which you should not be confused of in an X division. Eventually, Trey wins. Trey is the new number one competitor. This was a cheeseburger match. And the only reason why this was a cheeseburger match, once they kept on going to multiple shots of Trey's mom, and Ace Austin. Again, this is either going to be very good or very bad. You kind of knew who was going to win once they introduced that angle. Not straightforward saying Trey's going to win, but wow, it was interesting. And that was a fun match. Then we get into Alexa and Nicole, um, the Bubblegum Princess. And Madison Rain, <laughs> Josh was so funny. Josh was going into detail about their clothes, how Alex Nicole wore Tiffany blue. But Kyle's was like, the heck are you talking about? How did you know that? It's like, oh, well, I know something about fashion. It's like, well, Madison Rain there could be wearing fuchsia then instead of purple. And Josh was like, y- you might be right. I'll tell you what, I didn't realize that Madison Rain was only 33. She, she looks older. Or is it just me? It could always be just me. Um, Madison Rain, again, really good. She, she does a blockbuster from the top rope. That's pretty good. I'll tell you what, the Impact Women's Division is still the best women's division, I think, all of wrestling, minus probably the mid to upper card of NXT. The lower card of NXT women, they're bad. You just hope to see a wardrobe malfunction from them. But I'll tell you what, like Shayna Baszler... Uh, Io Shirai, Candice LeRae, even now Dakota, are returning Dakota Kai, Tegan Knox, Nixon Newell. I mean, they're really good, but then that, there's the cutoff point. So Impact, I think, really has Impact besides Women of Honor or Women of Wrestling or Joshi or, only, or any other woman specific. Impact has the best women's division, I think. Again, you can always feel free to comment. Say you don't know what you're talking about. You do know what you're talking about. Or or anything in between. Uh, that was actually good mat wrestling in this. Alexa Nicole knows how to wrestle. Uh, Kira Hogan was on the outside. She slapped the poor gum on a poor Anna Nicole's mouth. That was funny. Because she's, I guess, still nursing her dislocated shoulder. I'm trying to Think that might still be within the proper timeline, especially if they do multiple. I think when I got mine dislocated, it hurt for about a week. I said I didn't have surgery. I don't think she had surgery either. There's not really much you can do with a dislocated shoulder for surgery, unless you start tearing ligaments because of the dislocation. I, I think I'm I'm ninety percent sure about that statement. I have my doctor in education, not 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 doctoring, not being a doctor. And uh, then Alex Nicole again; she has a great swing net breaker, and put Madison Rain in electric chair slam. Um, eventually Madison Rain comes back, does the cross reigns. Yeah, maybe I think of a better name for that. Madison Rain wins. I have no problem with this match. This was fun. It was a cheeseburger match. Then we had Jake Chris from OVE, Ohio versus everyone, or Ohio versus everything, versus Daga. This is pretty neat because they start dodging kicks. Well, Jake has, again, according to Josh's explanation, he has some very educated feet. But so does Daga, however. Uh, Daga, again, he does some twisting, flippy stuff off the top rope to the ground. They, they didn't know what to call it either. I just say twisty, flippy stuff off the top rope. 
technical terms there, folks. And this is a guy coming wearing the Southern Pro Lucha Libre shirt one day coming to Daytona Beach or Ormond Beach or Deltona or somewhere around that area of Central East Florida. One day, maybe. I hope. Two years in the making. Um, again, Jake, again, the typical heel rakes the eyes. They have uh, Daga did a reversal into the Death Valley driver. That was pretty cool. Then it was counter for counter, which was awesome. Uh, Daga eventually hit the Tiger driver. Daga wins. Daga's going to be in the number one contenders match next week. Again, a really fun match. It's a cheeseburger match. And then I just want to mention, I forget if I wrote it down. Rob Van Dam does an amazing promo from a hot tub with uh, Katie Forbes. Oh, my. Katie Forbes. Oh, I'm surprised we didn't see anything. We didn't see a wardrobe malfunction on her. I think Rob Van Dam was trying to talk somewhat serious while drinking champagne. He was just up there like twerking, shaking her boobies. I don't even know what Rob, Rob Van Dam said besides I'm Rob Van Dam, I do what I want. I just remember her and whoa. <laughs> so that's always worth mentioning. And then we have Sammy Callahan and Man Man Fulton taking on Rich Swan and Tessa Blanchard. They botched this a couple times. Because the first time, I thought it was going to be Sammy Callahan and Man Man Fulton taking on Daga and Tessa Blanchard. Because they showed Daga with Rich Swan's picture. Then, the next time they, they tried to do a promo for this, it was Sammy Callahan versus Man, and Man Man Fulton taking on Rich Swan with Brian Cage's photo and Tessa Blanchard. So it's like, I guess it's, well, there's Daga. It's going to be Rich Swan or Brian Cage. So it's Rich Swan that came out and Tessa Blanchard. Uh, starts off, Tessa tried to do some move on Man Man Fulton. Man Man Fulton just started swinging around. I was waiting to see Tessa's brown panties again. Because that, that was cool. And that was just so by accident. Again, unfortunately, Fulton did not choose to suplex Tessa Blanchard. Tessa Blanchard said, no more suplex. <laughs> he grabbed the football tights. And yeah, you saw the pantyhose, the, the, the panties, and and if it was from the front or the back, probably a lot more. But nope. There were no chance for thank you, Fulton. Uh, so that was a very traditional last league match. Um, Sam hit a brain buster early on Tessa. I don't know. I think they're building up Tessa, but I don't know if they're going to give Brian Cage his rematch. So that'll be interesting. That was just brutal like, strength from Man Man Fulton, who actually deserves that. And then there was an exchanging of spots between Callahan. Uh, Rich Swan would do something. Man Man Fulton would clean the house. Tessa Blanchard would then do something to, to Man Fulton. This is awesome. This is awesome. Again, the uh, OVE! Ohio versus everyone teamwork is just amazing. A uh, Madman Fallen was doing headbutts to the back of Rich Swan, softening up that back for the bear hug. Listen, folks, a match doesn't start until there's a headbutt to the wrist. Just ask Delirious about that. Uh, again, the hot tag to Tessa. She's great. Sammy spat up spit. And caught it back in his mouth. That was almost impressive. Disgusting, but impressive. A lot of wrestlers do that, especially with chewing gum sometimes. I don't think that that was too white and frothy for chewing gum, though. Um, so, again, Sammy Callahan's the best. Uh, especially Sammy, Sammy Callahan and Man Man Fulton win by some double team move. It was. Oh, actually, you know what happened? Uh, Sammy Gall Callahan uh, goes to grab the baseball bat. Ref says, ah, you can't use the baseball bat. I'll disqualify you. So the ref takes the baseball bat, puts it aside. While the ref is distracted, Sammy Callahan gets the belt from Man Man Fulton. Clocks. 
poor Tessa over the head with it. I think it was no, it was clocks Rich Swan over the head with it. Clocks someone over the head with it. Throws the belt out, goes for the cover. Ref said, "Okay, you just seem to be lying there for a while." The ref was really distracted. I'm surprised he got the three count in. But Sammy Callahan and Man Man Fulton won. Thumbs up. And then they start to beat up everyone because this is what OVE does. Because they're Ohio versus everything. And then Cage makes a save. I'll tell you what, this was fun. This was a surf and turf match. Uh, then there's... Ooh, I'll mention him. Yeah. I'll, um, Nostrand themes. Yes, thank you very much for commentating. Um, you, sir, just because of your comment, you're going to get the Natalia Superior, Becky Inferior. And to answer your question, yes, um, and I did reply to you, I am going to go to NXT at Daytona Beach. So you can see this guy, the one, the only Hobo Tom at the Daytona Beach NXT show. Again, I will be taking videos unless securities, unless they ramp up security, which I haven't the past couple times. You never know. I don't think they're bringing up anyone new, so there are no spoilers. So that's always a good sign. So again, I'll get plenty of videos, and typically the way I do, do things is that I have to get videos of the entrances and a couple of minutes or so of the match and provide my comment and insight, and I give the match a rating. Um, but again, you, so again, you can see this guy, Hobo Tom, here at Daytona Beach at the Multicultural Center. And right, I think, oh, look, look, look at that. Actually, technology, I actually put that up there. I'm doing good for a change. Um, so, so that's that. Then we have Johnny Swinger. Johnny Swinger is going to die. I guess he wanted to emulate the stars of past WWE, and he took a dump in someone's bag. He thought it was... Um, oh, Canadian Destroyer. Can actually look that up because I have notes. Dee Williams, he thought he took a dump in Diddy's bag. He did not. He left his mess in Ken Shamrock's bag. Johnny Swinger's going to die. And then later in the show, he brags about it. Johnny Swinger's going to die, folks. Uh, there's Moose playing tennis. That was kind of funny. That was a really softball thing to do. They found some guy who's a bit better at tennis than I am. But yeah, I've been playing for 20 years. Doesn't mean anything. Um, Moose was there, like, standing in, like, this relaying things. I think a couple of them actually went over, to, were actually out. Oh! Too, so I don't know how good that was. Uh, then our next match, it was, it was Havoc versus Crystal Moon. Oh, wow. We were having so much fun with that name in Discord. Um, crystal White, Crystal Meth. Full full Crystal Moon. We are having fun. Uh, this is um, Havoc versus Jobber. Jobber tried to get offense, and this time Havoc did the smart thing. And this is what I like about Impact, is that they have their people have squash meshes the right way. If you're going to have a Jobber, they can get some offense, but with a monster like Havoc, Jessica Havoc, she no sold everything. Yes! It's like, this person really has no chance. <laughs> no. Like, Havoc's gonna kill you. Havoc's going to kill you. Uh, that was just fun. Um, Havoc was no selling the job or eventually hit the Tombstone Pile Driver on port or on poor Crystal Moon. I'll tell you what, because of the job we actually tried, and there was a no sell, so at least Havoc was invested in the smash to some degree. This is a ham sandwich of a match.
Then Susie! Susie literally stared right into Havoc's bosom and then looked up and said, Do I remember you? You seem to be very violent. I seem to remember you. Susie's hot. And she, in fact, she stared right at Havoc's movies. Oh, wow. I, do I remember you? Do I remember those? Uh, then we get into the main event. It was Eddie Edwards and Marafuji taking on the North. Uh, classic wrestling match for the most part. Again, they hit the, uh, Eddie Edwards hit the inverted atomic drop. I love atomic drops. It's an old school move. I'm old school. I'm Baron Von Rapsky. I'm Chief J. Strongbow. I am Larry Zabisco, Nick Bockwinkle. All those people. I actually saw them wrestle in the AWA and WCCW. The fabulous Freebirds, the fabulous, the Sheep Herders, uh, the Moon Dogs, Bill Dundee, Jerry the King Lawler, uh, King Kong Bundy, George the Animal Steel, the Dingo Warrior, Terry Hogan. Who else was there? I know I'm missing a few names. Again, the Junkyard Dog. So the guy with the uh, Bad News Brown. The Heart Foundation. The Von Eric. The Freebirds. Everyone knows about them. Again, just... going The original Legion of Doom. Cleveland! Again, I like the old school stuff. Uh, again, they... They had the uh, eventually Eddie Edwards and Marafuji did the double lower bridge. Marafuji jumped to the outside, started kicking people in the head. Eddie Edwards does a crazy fly. Eddie Edwards, like, Alicia Edwards must have done his hair. It was, like, weird looking. And then so many chops. So much hamburger chest. I don't remember people back in the day doing chops at all. And there was only a few wrestlers, didn't them? Sting did them, Flair did them, Simbo did them. Everything else, I don't remember that many chops for some reason. I'll have to watch some old, some old school wrestling again. Um, and then the uh, one guy hit the cross body through the ropes on Marafuji. That looked great. Uh, Paige, he's so good at taunting. He's improved leaps and bounds. It's amazing. Um, and there was this standing... Oh, it was a standing Chikihara kick. That was pretty cool. Uh, it was good, good uh, false finishes by both teams. Eddie Edwards gets gets pummeled in the back in the front, though. That's the end of that. So the North win, they retain in a really good cheeseburger match. And that was actually Impact was really good. It was so much better than Raw was. And Raw wasn't bad. It's just that one episode, that one segment with Lana. That was terrible. I wanted to hear all the booze. So again, this match was fun. It was a good cheeseburger match. And for the most part, for the show, it was a good cheeseburger show. And now I'm going to try something. Because I know I still have to shower up. Whoa. That felt like I was 10 years old in Pennsylvania, in Pennsylvania again. That was pretty cool. Yes, I'm back. Uh, no time. I think Tuesdays is going to be... I think I have a new name for Tuesday. Tuesday is going to be like minor league Tuesday or something. Or fun league Tuesday. I just watched NWA Power Hour. Wow. I went back to my youth. The glass bottle of Gatorade. The cans of RC Cola from the gas station. Like. 7-Eleven real Slurpees when there were like only like two flavors. Literally, you had your choice of like cherry or Coca-Cola. And sometimes you didn't even have that. 
Actually, no, he always had two, two choices. It was always Cherry and Coca-Cola. Flushy. I'll tell you what. I haven't seen anything like that from the AWA days back in, jeez, 1980s. Again, when I was like... Yeah, 1980s, when I was like 8 to 10 years old. And I'd come home because I had to go with my mom and sister to go to my sister's ballet and tap dancing classes. I always wanted to get home in time so I could watch pro wrestling on AWA. And this is what the NWA Power Hour has become. This is interesting because they also have a pay-per-view, 12-14. I think I'll do what I used to do where I'll have it in like the super small screen in like a corner somewhere. Then every show off and like pop up like nine seconds of it. I don't know, because I'll be getting off my suspension in, oh, wow, 18 days. And I don't necessarily want to go right back to suspension. I like to spend a little time live streaming. I get more views that way. But I have to do that. Though. That's, that's going to be interesting. Um, let's talk about some NWA power now that I'm back from my break. Because I saw Colt Cabana. Colt Cabana. Wow. They have a long intro. I'll give them that. Very 8-ish intro. Um, the one guy, Dave Marquez, interviews the Rock and Roll Express. A beautiful Bobby and st stunning Stan Lane, I think. I forget what their names were, actually. I saw they're the Rock and Roll Express. I'll tell you what, it does have that old AWA feel. I still can't believe the fact, and I forget if I mentioned this or not when I did my AEW review, I still can't believe Bobby Eaton hit a Canadian destroyer. Granted, it was the slowest motion Canadian destroyer you ever saw. I'm never hitting a Canadian destroyer, though. Much less when on Bobby Eaton's age and wear limit. And then there was the Kingston and the Homicide came on. It was cool. Um, the first match, I'll tell you what, this guy looked like he came out of the 70s and 80s. Wow. Trevor Murdoch versus uh, Caleb. Caleb something. I don't even care. Trevor Murdoch. He just looks some, like some old school AWA, NWA, 70s, 80s wrestlers that they found in like some like Texas bar. Like, whoa. That's like a real throwback. Um, uh, a Caleb, a Caleb, whatever his name is, actually did manage to hit the monkey flip on him. And, however, for all his troubles, Trevor Murdoch hit an Arn Anderson like spine buster. Oh, Jim Cornette. He was propping up both guys, especially Trevor Murdoch. Saying how um, he was trained in the same in the same camp, and for a while by Harley Race when he was still alive. Again, that's that's going back a while, but he he just got out of wrestling. He's back into it, has a new passion for it. So he has like the old school trunks, like that, like cover his like whole stomach. He has a beer gut, drinks a lot of beers. He looks like an old version of the of the um, uh, beer city brawler. Beer City Bruiser, or yeah, yeah, something like that. Um, I'll tell you what, this was. He just said, "Come on, sunshine." He gave him so many body slams. It was so old school. I enjoyed it. Again, especially with the cameras ringside, um, he did some. And the one guy tried a springboard. That was pretty cool. Uh, Trevor Murdoch hit a hit a full Nelson slam. Followed by a top row bulldog. I've never known that to be a finish except for in the days of the AWA. Well, I, I was literally entertained. And it was a quick match, so it was really good. This was a cheeseburger of a match. And then we had Aaron Stevens had a recap of his match, two out of three falls on Heel Hoss. I'll tell you what, Damian Sandow. He can cut a promo, and he got that crowd reaction, and he was living it up. That was fun. Um, they did a lot of promos during this. I forget if they did a lot of promos. I just remember Skandar Akbar would swing his cane and, like, yell at people. And every so often, Wahoo McDaniels would get on the mic. Um, I don't think he saw Mean Gene Oakland that much. 
but I know every so often there would be other hosts with a mic. I just can't recall any of their names. I just remember Skandar Akbar, the guy who dressed up like a sheep and beat people over the head with his cane. The pr- um, who was it? it Heenan. Heenan was really in WWF. Maybe Classy Freddy Blassie would do... No. Classy Freddy Blassie was more WWF. I just remember Skandar Akbar and Mr. Fuji. Mr. Fuji and Skandar Akbar. Only two managers I really remember. They always had... Some wrestlers did have ballets, though. And for those that are a little too young to remember, a ballet is actually a woman that would come out with her man, kind of take his, take his clothes, and she would always be... If it was the baby face, if the guy was a baby face, he would always protect her. If the guy was a heel, he'd always use her as a shield. So <laughs> uh, then we had Thunder Rosa and Marty Bell taking on Crystal Rose and Brooklyn Creed. What was a squash match? Even though I had no idea who anyone was. Uh, Thunder Rose is good. I think this is like the third time I've seen her. Once I saw her in Triple A, and I think it was one of those multi women matches, and then I saw her another time. It was Thunder Rosa and someone else taking on Rosemary and Allie, the Demon Bunny connect, the Demon Bunnies. And I just remember Allie tried to like befriend Thunder Rosa. Allie thought Thunder Rosa was Rosemary again because of like the face paint and everything. So it was pretty cool. Uh, Thunder Rosa, she has that Lucia style. I think Thunder Rosa's actually going to try her hand in MMA. I don't know if it's Pride, Bellator. I don't think she's in the UFC. I think it's like Bellator or whatever would be the equivalent to Bellator. I'm not too sure. It's not It's not the UFC. It's, it's, it's not the main... It's, it's not the major league. It's like that, like AAA of like MMA. It's not like the hometown garbage. But again, it's like Bellator or Pride. What was the other one? WEC, I think, or something like that. Um, yeah, WECF. That's it's, it's something. It, it's 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 definitely it's one of those things you can see on ESPN every so often. If not ESPN, and be on like Fox Sports. So it's a major thing. Not as big as the the um, Ultimate Fighting Championship, though. Uh, so Thunder Rosa did that vicious turtle stomp. Oh, that, that looked terrible. I'll tell you what, she made it look so good, though. Um, it was a squash match, though. Thunder Rosa and Marty Bell won. It's a ham sandwich. And then Marty Bell goes to explain her the reasoning for her turn. I, don't, I didn't see that episode. Um, I'll tell you what. I, the thing I do like about NWA Power is that they give like near immediate post match interview, which is really fun. They have the whole stage set up. Jim Cornette's over there. We'll get to Jim Cornette in a bit. Um, right across from the ring, we have kind of the after match area. Uh, Marty Bell tried to translate. I don't think she, I think she forgot what the script was. Um, and then the mark, <laughs> you want to see like, the most probably generic 70s wrestler who no one cares about and could be anyone. It's the guy who comes out in a mask, full bodysuit with a question mark. Um, then Colt Cabana came out. Colt Cabana. Colt Cabana. And he comes out, he has to, again, this is like so 80-ish. It's such a such a blast into the past. I I like it. I want to see that. I want to see the NWA pay-per-view. That looks fun. Um Cole Kidman came on, uh, Ricky Starks came on, says, Yeah, I, I like like gold. Whatever he has his belt. Cole Cabana. Actually, I've seen now that I've seen the US belt. I think they've changed it a bit. It looks it's a US championship belt that it has the U United States of America. And then on the under like um where you would find the states like Florida, Louisiana, Texas. Um 
Nevada, New Mexico, and they're not in order. Arizona, California. It says, it says um, United States. And then I think in the middle it says champion. There's like an eagle there on it. So it was cool. It's not as bad as people have described it. It's not the best, but it serves its purpose. It's actually pretty nice looking. Again, just to hold a belt somewhere, I'd be happy. Uh, Colt Cabana. Colt Cabana deserves this. After all his years of Ring of Honor and Shikara, pro wrestling gorilla, he deserves some kind of recognition. And then we have the match Dan Parker versus a question mark. I thought Mark, I'm like, a wrestling Mark? I'll tell you what, this is neat. Only because it looks like one of those places that I could actually wrestle in. And even if I just came out as Hobo Tom, wow, I just found myself a new calling. <laughs> if NWA ever comes to Daytona Beach, I'm going to get my friends to lie and say, yeah, I'm a trained pro wrestler. I'll do like five moves in a three-minute match. I can figure that out. Um, <laughs> but, but Dan Parker, <laughs> Jim Cornette, he's like, did he come from Bum Beach, Canada? No, it's something else. Like That was just funny. Anytime we get to rag on Canada, it's always fun. Uh, again, the, the question mark, old school wrestling strikes, like just clubbing over the top onto the back. Judo chop. Uh, missile drop kick was about as complex as it got. Um, what was this finisher? It's a missile drop kick and a version of like the, the Oriental Spike where he hits some in the throat with like these two knuckles. Goes, oh. So again, that's kind of neat. Uh, the question mark one. And it was just old school nostalgia feel. That's a ham sandwich, folks. Then I think the only, my only complaint about NWA power is a lot of promo. However, if you're a new wrestler and, and you have to learn how to do promos, instead of going to like promo 101, promo 102, uh, I know in the performance center they have like promo class one, promo level one, promo level two, promo level three. Uh, promo level one, you're kind of just trying to figure out stuff. Uh, promo level two, you have to kind of give a little bit more detail about your character and be able to convey that to the audience. Promo level three is when you actually start doing, I think it's either at the end of two or, or in three, is when you actually start doing promos more so for your class. And you're actually great on promos. And how you can convey those, and, and how you can enter, and how you can interact. So again, promo level like one is like, okay, yeah, uh, I'm Hobo Tom. I don't know much. I don't know much wrestling. I bite people, I kick people in the nuts, and and I try to like cheat and do whatever it is to win. Whether that's good or bad, it's probably bad. My name's Hobo Tom. I, I don't know. I I came in here. I was looking for some aluminum. And I'll tell you what, the, these slobs here in Daytona Beach, they leave crap all over the place. So I kind of stumbled into here, and, and they said, hey, you look like a wrestler. Get in that ring. Uh, this guy didn't show up. Was like, and I said, oh, okay. Yeah, they, they said they'd give me a ham sandwich, too. So I so, said, so, hey, I'm getting a free ham sandwich. I'm going to clean up. After all, you slobs here leave your aluminum beer cans here. I, I'll, I'll get in the ring. I'm like, well, well who's this guy? This is it's like, well, why can't I go fight him now, ref? It's like, there, 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 there's rules? Like, like what rules? Don't you know the rules of wrestling? Like, this is a fight, isn't it? No, this is professional wrestling. Same difference. I could probably get through promo one, promo two, and probably be on my way to promo three, I think, quickly, if they liked it. Again, from what I've heard at the Performance Center, it's... Semi quasi political, and if you know someone, and if you if you know someone and already have a preconceived idea, and you're in a big name, it'll go over. If you know someone more so, if you're like, hey, I have this great idea. So, again, there's uh, that's everywhere though. <laughs> um, so Eli Drake comes out, cuts a promo. It was pretty good. <laughs> People start going. 
Hey, hey, Juan, question mark. He want question mark. Again, he's like, no, I'm here to give you the explanation. Good comeback. Again, that's one of those things you learn like promo three. It's like how to give good comebacks. Then Leitner and Isaac show up. Um, Alda shows up uh, talking about Camila. Yeah. Uh, Camille or something. I guess the woman he's with. And how come she doesn't talk? So it's almost like they're doing the kind of Randy Savage, Heel Savage, um, Elizabeth thing, a little bit. Then Mr. Anderson comes out, or Mr. Kennedy, however you know him. He's still wrestling. That's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> then there was something about a wrestling farm. I don't, I don't know. They had like the most ridiculous. They had some of the most ridiculous commercials on. And you know, it was kind of like fixed. Uh, Billy Corgan eventually came out, gave us a promo, talked about the promo, talked about NWA, really promotes his own brand, which is pretty good, cool to see. And Nick Aldis was out there. You know, it was kind of fun. Then we get to the main event of the evening where we have Outlaw Incorporated versus the Wild Card. I'll tell you what. <laughs> they said, we're going to go to a break. Oh, no, we're not because they just start crawling. Some producer, some lady in, in a headset. Actually, it takes the belts from them. Again, it feels so 80-ish. The fact that they actually wear heads with wires attached to them. <laughs> I know. Uh, it was to start off with the brawl. Uh, Homicide and Isaacs eventually start off. It feels like an old AWA match. They got, for the most part, most of the action in the ring. Um, again, they have the good double teams in the corners. Um, both Outlaw Inc. and the Wild Cards did it. Although the Outlaw Inc. did it more. Again, their heels are supposed to do that more. And again, they have an obvious kind of spot setting, which is just funny to watch. You're like, and it's not something they did it subtly enough where I'm sure if I had a girlfriend in the seat, right, honey, you don't know anything about wrestling, do you? What's that? No, you're invisible. You're not even here. Get out of here. Get that chair out of here. Um, if, if you've never seen wrestling before, it's like, huh? But but when when you have an eye for it, yeah, you can tell you can tell what they're doing. It's, it's, it's just fun to, to kind of catch. Um, <laughs> I love it when the heels always say, "I can count too, ref." Uh, what else is there? A Latner again. He's just the best hoss. Just a big hoss. I like that when they use hoss phrases. Uh, Tim Cornette did spend part of this match listing out. All of his pet peeves about modern day wrestling. He said, We're, We don't have any cosplayers. We don't have grade school kids. We don't have midgets in NWO. We just have men who want to fight. <laughs> he just began to air out his list of grievances. <laughs> I just had to hear that. I'm like, Yep, that sounds about right for Jim Cornette. Get off my yard. I live in Cleveland. Um, then uh, Homicide, I think, got dumped because Nick Aldis wanted to get ringside seat, so he pulled up a chair. Again, he actually didn't interfere. Um, I think Homicide got dumped on the champ. Uh, so that leaves Ortiz. Leaves, um, then Kingston got double teamed a lot. Um, they, the one guy did that full Nelson German suplex. It was a full Nelson, popped him up from that, hit him into a German suplex. That looked great. Um, and Outlaw Incorporated retained their belt. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The Wild Cards retained their belt. And then all of a sudden, because the one guy got tossed into him, uh, uh, the whole locker room empties out. They kind of push and shove. They all talk. And that was it. This was fun. Uh, and then Camille came out, and Nick Aldis is putting her aside. Eddie. Oh, yeah, Eli Jake. Again, he came out, and like two other tag teams came out. I have no idea who they were. Um, but this was fun. I'll tell you what. Only, only because it was so old school. I'll tell you what. This was a cheeseburger match. It just seemed the way it would have ended in an AWA thing, too. So that was fun. So I might be doing this more often. I might be doing this on a better schedule. Some, some, if I can post this up, Ashley won't right after I've seen it. But I've got to some video editing. So 
So again, just to let you know about the rest of the schedule. So tomorrow, I'll be doing my AEW review. Friday night. Oh, yeah, Friday, I'll be doing my either Friday or I'll catch the replay of it Saturday morning. I'll be doing my SmackDown review. And then Saturday night, you can see this guy, Hobo Tom, here live in Daytona Beach. Uh, that's the 16th of November. But I'll be there probably about 6.30ish. I do have to get my ticket. Um, I'll be waiting in line to get autographs or to see who's giving autographs. I will get my autograph from Candice LeRae one day. And I will drop my pants and I will run, I will run into the ring pantless. I don't care. It'll be so worth getting arrested for. All of the story I can pass down, pass down to, to my nieces and nephews forever. That'd be funny. Like it's like, why aren't you at work? It's like, well, I met a wrestler. I dropped my pants, and then I rolled into the ring, evading <laughs> the cops and wrestlers, <laughs> pantless. But if you see a size, if you see a, see some. Size 42 jeans and Daytona Beats are probably mine. Um, and then I have also, I get to relax Sunday.